everybody welcome back to my channel I feel like there's so much to talk about and then I stress out about filming a video because I'm like ah, I'm gonna forget to tell them like this and that and just it's a little cold here today I was able to to get a sweater out and that's saying something um, it's in the 60s feels good though I like it um, I'm in Colorado, by the way. I'll get into the 80s by the end of the day anyway, so. Okay, so. My last video, I mentioned that I was going to go on vacation, and I was torn on, like, what project to take and all that. So, I have a list again of things to talk about, but they're not exactly in order, so I apologize in advance. <sighs> First off, thank you guys for the comments on uh, my Halloween Quaker. I had asked about what fabric I should use. I appreciate all the responses. I'm completely doing something different though, guys. Okay, what should I start with? I have, I'm gonna show you my new start that I took to Texas. By the way, Texas was really fun. My sister was surprised to see me. We flew into San Antonio and um, we went to um, the Riverwalk, I forget what it's called, um, where the Alamo is and there was like a lot of shopping um, areas and stuff so I did a little bit of shopping and it was really nice. And I got a good amount of stitching in. Um, not as much, obviously, as I wanted, um, but it was nice to be with the family and everything. So, where is... Right here. So I took with me on the plane um, Country Cottage Needlework Snow Days. Where is the camera today? And I figured it was kind of a small piece, so it's not a big deal. My dog's going crazy again. Zoe, hey, calm down. Let's calm down for a second, okay? Um, so I went ahead and I did this on blue fabric. So I got the snowman done, and I got some... Um, snowflakes in there so I have to let's see here I have to carry on the bottom of the snow and start working on this part. so I like the way that it pops on the blue fabric um, and this is a piece of scrap that I had got here locally um, and I talked about it in my last video I think and then I kind of have the other flosses that I'm using in here just to kind of keep it separate. So I took that and I was able to stitch a good amount of it um, on the plane right over there because I had the whole row to myself so that was nice. Um, on the way back though, I didn't stitch at all. I was just exhausted. I slept on the plane. It was only a like a two-hour flight anyway. Um, and there was somebody right next to me and I didn't want to be like bumping into them. So I did get a good amount done though. The thing that took the longest was all the white. It killed me. It took forever. So when I got back home, I was determined to get that white done and finally got it done and I had to just put it aside. I was like, on to the next because this is just too much. Okay. More whips. I finished this little room finally. I was almost done with it. I just needed the back stitching done. Um, question for you guys who use one strand of thread. I had the work like normally when I do back stitching, you're supposed to use one strand. I I normally cannot see one strand like it's not enough. 
for my liking so I usually use two however for um, like the little spider webs I wanted them to be thinner so I decided to do one strand on those and I, I know that some people do like um, they use one strand when they stitch how do you how do you start one strand back stitch because I couldn't get it to really tie on the back um, I was having issues and I usually do the loop method that's how I usually start obviously Zoe obviously you can't use a loop method with one strand so you know I, I don't know what the technique is when you put put through one strand and then you're when you get back through the next loop you kind of tie it on the back it wasn't holding because it was just one strand and it wasn't close enough I don't know what I'm trying to say guys how do you what method do you use for one strand I would love to know because I struggled you should have seen the struggle it was it was kind of sad um, kind of embarrassing but whatever if you have any recommendations on one strand let me know <sighs> did I work on anything else um, I have another start should I wait until later though I'll wait because my start was from a, a haul so <sighs> oh I have my first finish Finally, finally, and I forgot it upstairs, so I'll be right back. Okay, guys. My first finish. Super excited. If you um, watched my last video, I mentioned how this was my first start, like, ever, a few years ago. And I wasn't a fan of it anymore, like, the pattern. I'm still not. And it's on white, 14 count Ada. Um, out of breath, I just ran up the stairs. Um, it's on 14 count Ada, and I'm just happy that it's done. All I needed was like this portion right here. And I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna get it done. I'm just gonna take it out, get it done. Um, and I'm happy that I have my first finish. So I don't know how I'm gonna FFO this. Um, I've never had an FFO, obviously, but my younger sister, she's 14. She came to visit me um, when I was in Arizona for a little bit. And she actually had a finish and I helped her frame her project. So I have a little experience, but I really don't know what I'm doing. So we'll see. I'll have to YouTube some videos. Um, I think I'm just gonna frame this and put it up in my room. It was originally for my room, for my husband and I, little lovebirds. Um, so yeah, I'm happy that I have a finish, my first finish. So excited about that. Okay, what else? Um, in my last video, I also mentioned that I had ordered um, a pattern on the Facebook group the unloading Facebook group and so that finally came in I say finally it came in quick they they shipped it quickly so Lizzie Kate think spring I think it's super cute it came with the fabric um, it just says 28 count Jobelin it doesn't have a color or anything but it's like this um, bluish green mint color it's really pretty I think it's gonna look really good so I don't see myself starting this anytime soon um, probably start it for the spring next I had ordered from 123 stitch um, the Halloween Quaker last week and I don't remember if I showed I think I showed hauled from last week I had got barnwood and twilight and dwarf um, 
I'm pretty sure I showed that, so I'm not going to show everything again. However, I was debating on the colors for Halloween Quaker. As you know, I was debating on the fabric first, and then I wanted to do a floss toss. And then I realized, okay, this project, I think, is going to be one of those projects that I'm going to want to do the fancy floss. The variegation, um, I think, would look really good on the motifs. So I decided to place another order with 123 Stitch to get some of the flosses. Um... When I was purchasing, you got to pay for shipping anyway, so I was like, you know what, let me just grab um, Holiday Quaker as well, because I knew I was eventually going to do this one, and might as well just add the floss too, right? So, got this in the mail, along with um, some other things that I'm about to show you. I ordered um, Murky for Halloween Quaker. I wasn't sure if I was going to use it for that or not, but I said, hey, let me just grab it and see. Do a floss toss on this one and see if I like it. I also ordered Nocturne. It's like a blue gray. It's really pretty. I love it. And then I ordered Haunted. Um, because on my Haunted Mansion cell, I love the Haunted fabric. And I have a few other pieces that I want to do. And I was like, I'm just going to grab another one of these because I know I love it so much. And I, I posted this on my Instagram, but I know that um, all these fabrics are like hand dyed. They're unique. They're one of a kind. You obviously can't replicate the exact thing. However, I ordered Haunted and it came in completely different. I mean... I love it, but it's not what I expected. So this is Haunted. It has a lot more teal and like black in it versus this one that is, there's like no teal in here at all. I mean, this is like a lighter, um, like charcoal and lighter gray color compared to this. So was I disappointed? Yes, because it's not what I ordered technically. I was expecting something a little closer to this, you know. Um, however, I love this. I freaking love it. Um, I messaged 123Stitch um, and, you know, they said that c their colors vary, obviously. Um, and that I could exchange it. I would just have to pay shipping to return it. And then they would pay shipping for something else, um, which is fine. I didn't, I didn't return it though. Um, I want to keep it. However, I did order one other fabric called Shale, which is like a kind of like a tannish color. And when it arrived, it was like a rose color. It was beautiful. I didn't know what I was going to use it for, so I ended up sending that one back. Um, and I should have showed you guys, but I'm very impatient. And I just wanted to get it back so that I could um, get my new order, which I'll show you guys next week. Just a few things anyway. So, Haunted. I love it. It's just be careful when you're ordering because things come out different all the time. Um, so I ordered those three. And then I ordered the Holiday Quaker. I feel like I just went off track completely. Did I? No. Okay. Also, I think I showed this last week. I'm not positive. 
from 123 Stitch. I ordered the Lizzie Kate Mystery Sampler, just the first part. I think I showed that. I'm starting to forget what I've showed and what I haven't showed, guys, so I'm sorry. But I'm pretty sure I did, though, because if I remember correctly, I filmed when I got when I got this bad boy that I was waiting for. Okay. So, let's talk about Halloween Quaker for a second. I wanted to start this really bad. I got all the flosses that I needed for it. So I have all the flosses. And I just wasn't sure about the fabric. <clears throat> I did, I pulled out a few fabrics that I thought might work, including the um, called for Murphy that I had ordered. So I did a floss toss and I was in between three fabrics and I went onto Facebook Stitch Mania page and I kind of asked for like advice, like, hey, what do you guys think? Help me out here. And this one, fabric number two, I had posted three of them. This was fabric number two, one hands down and I couldn't agree more. So it, it's like a gray with a little bit of like a purple tint. It's beautiful and it is 28 count Mirage. Beautiful. Absolutely stunning. So I'm not going to be using the Cult for Murky. I have it, but I'm not going to use it. I'm going to use this one. I think it's perfect because it just has like the tiniest amount of like purple undertone and I think all these would pop um, so I was excited to start this but then if you can tell I'm putting all this back in here because I have not started it because I received the holiday Quaker and I said well I got the flosses let me just do a floss toss and figure out what fabric I'm going to use for this one as well so I could just have both of them ready to go um, so I knew that I didn't want to use this fabric because um, it's just a little too light I don't know there's something about it there's some like blue um, snowflakes that you can't even see which I'm gonna be doing white for those so I decided to use um, yeah, it's a new start. I, I decided to use Dwarf, uh, Dwarf, D-W-A-R-F. I got it from our, my last one, two, three stitch. Um, it's really pretty. I don't know if you could see it. So, this one, it took me a while to get the floss together because I ordered all the floss that it called for. Um, But I was not loving some of the colors. So I knew that I wanted to change up a few things. And I will show you. I'll show you what I changed. So I have like this box with all my fancy flosses in here. So it calls for Country Redwood by Classic Color Work. Color Works and Claret. So it calls for these. This is more like an orangey shade, and this is more of like a pink shade. And I just wanted more of like classic red. Um, so I I switched it to. I switched it to Classic Color Works Licorice Red and the Gentle Art Sampler Threads Buckeye Scarlet. So this is more, hey, it's okay. This is more of like a true red. Hey, she's looking out the window and she sees a squirrel. 
That's what I have to deal with. Hey, it's okay. It's okay. There. Come on. Go to your bed. Go to your bed. Thank you. So this is more like a classic red, and this is a little more pink, um, but not as much as this one, if you could tell. So these are the cold fords, and this is what I'm using. So they're um, a little more true to red, um, and it's hard to show on there, and these are much more pink and orange. So I'm not going um, not gonna to use these. I could have exchanged them or returned them when I sent back the other fabric, um, but this country redwood is so pretty for like an autumn piece, and I have the Lizzie Kate Seasons, and I think this would be perfect for the autumn's um, pattern. And then this one, I think I could also throw it throw it in that pattern. I think they would look good. So I decided just to keep those. Also, um, this pattern calls for, let me see here, so the darker, like, green shades, so, like this, these two here are two different shades, so this is called Blue Spruce, and this one's Cucumber, I believe, I didn't want such a um, how do I explain it? I wanted more of a Christmas green. So I changed, um, and I have notes back here. I changed a uh, cucumber to pine, which is more of a true green here. Um, And blue spruce is the called for color um, for the darker shade for this one but I'm changing it to pine and then I'm changing cucumber as well I don't even remember to be honest I'm just kind of rolling with it you know um, but I know that I switched out Cucumber, so I don't have cucumber in my kit here anymore. Let me see. It's really pretty. Here it is. But I decided to use pine instead. It's a little more. This is kind of like more of like a um, old traditional. Green, and then this is more of like a true Christmas green so I switched that out also for the um, two red ones that I that I switched out it's not like it's not exact like oh I'm gonna change out claret for Buckeye Scarlet and I'm gonna change out country redwood for licorice red I'm just gonna as I'm doing the chart I'm just going to put whatever color I decide is going to look best for that part because I don't want, um, I just want the colors to kind of evenly spread out and not just like one color on this portion of the chart. I don't know if I'm making sense. Does anyone understand what I'm saying? So I can't necessarily say that I'm changing out this color for this color. I'm just changing out these two colors and I'm going to add these two colors in wherever I see fit. Because I just like changing colors, apparently. Um, like that blue, by the way. You can't even see that blue, so I'm, I'm just going to do white. Anyway, this is pine. And I think it's beautiful. It's hard to see the variegation on here. But it's really nice. By the way, I really need a... Um, Christmas needle minder as well as like a Halloween one um, and by the way when I went to San Antonio across from the um, 
Alamo, there is a store where you could buy all these great things. There's a lot of like Day of the Dead things. And I found a um, like a little sugar skull necklace. It was pretty thin, and it was the perfect size for a needle minder. So I decided to buy it. I was like, "This is gonna be perfect. I'm gonna make this into a needle minder for my like a Halloween needle minder." And I lost it. I don't know where the hell it is. It was like in a little black bag that they gave me, and I think maybe my mom or somebody thought it was trash, threw it away. I looked everywhere a few times, like in my backpack and stuff, and I can't find it, so. I need to order a needle minder for, like I want a Halloween one and a Christmas one. I need a, I need a look. Anyway, so that is my new start. Um, and I've been obsessed with it, like, I just want to stitch on it, but obviously I got things to do, you know. Um, What's up? What else? What else? Let's see. Hmm. I think that's it. So, one other thing. I dyed one more piece of fabric just because I like to experiment and stuff. It's hard to see on camera. It's definitely not what it looks like. It's like a blue, it has aquamarine and like a blue color and a little bit of gray. It looks really pretty in person because apparently on here you can't really see. Oh, there's somewhat of it. I need to iron it a little better, but I really like how that came out and I just used the DMC Monaco even weed 28 count so I have a bag of my self dyed fabrics I put in here and I write down the dye that I used and the fabric that I used so obviously you can't replicate it but at least I get an idea if I need to make something again what else? Do I have anything else? I feel like... Oh! One other thing. I went to the thrift store again. Mm. I found a few things from the same lady as last time. I don't know if she passed away and her things are slowly going into that thrift store or maybe she's well and alive and she's just donating some of her stuff I don't know but I know it's her because it's the same exact writing she has like the same um, way of like separating her patterns and her flosses and I, I just know it's the same lady so let me show you really quick I'm telling you this video all my videos are all over the place guys I even try to put like to organize this but it's just not happening I found this Sally Ann chart called winter's whisper sampler it's really pretty um, but I'm not too much into like the whole alphabet thing so I'll probably post this up on the unloading Facebook group but it came with the fabric and it came with another piece of fabric maybe she couldn't decide which one she wanted to use and I'm pretty sure um, I have these already because what I'm thinking is she had like a big, big piece of fabric and then she cuts them for projects because I'm pretty sure these two um, I found last time I went through shopping and I found her stuff so I got extra now and then it came with um, this variegated floss. It also looks somewhat similar um, to the last haul that I did. And it has like a number. So I found that in like a bag like this. And then I found one other one. 
this one, the, um, the pattern's folded up, which, don't fold a pattern, guys. Kills me when people fold up patterns. I don't know. Just don't fold it up. Um, Heartland Angels, designed by Diane Arthurs. Not not my style. If anybody's interested, let me know. They're just four different angels. Um, if anyone's interested, let me know. I'll send it to you. Um, but it was folded, so I'm sorry. Um, but you could still clearly read the patterns and everything. It has the called for DMC. And the stitch, I mean, it has everything. It, she has a little bit of writing and pencil, which I could erase. Um, and she gets, or she got everything from Fibers and Frames in Wisconsin, it looks like. Because the other patterns also had the same, like, sticker. Also, came with, it's getting hot now, um, it's the coffee. My little wifey cup. Ray Dunn. Came with some fabrics. Came with this one. Came with this one. This one. Which is equivalent to the other one that I just pulled out. Um, and it came with this one, which I've never seen a fabric like this. Um, it almost feels like felt. Um, it's clearly for, could be used for cross stitching. Um, it looks maybe like a 28 count, maybe 32 count. Um, but if you can tell, it has like green and red flakes in it. Um, can you see that? has flakes in it that's crazy to me um, I don't think I would use it because the the texture um, oh it bothers me I don't know I don't know what it is even with clothes if it's a certain texture I can't put it on and I just to me I would not enjoy stitching on the the texture so um, there are four pieces of fabric in here, and there are four charts, so I'm pretty sure she had already planned out what she was going to use. And I am guessing, this is the darker one here, I'm guessing she had planned to use this. Um, there's somebody outside, and I'm pretty sure my dog's about to go crazy, so let me hurry up. Liberty Angel with this. I'm guessing that's what she was going to use. So, if you're interested in this chart, in this folded up chart, and this piece of fabric, um, I'll keep these, but if you're interested, let me know. So, I'm going to continue working this week on my Holiday Quaker. I'm very excited about that. And I really have to work on my sister's Christmas gift. I have not worked on it at all. I need to get to it. Jen, put aside some time. I will get to it. And if you have any suggestions on how to finish this, I'm thinking framing it, right? You just put it on the sticky board. I know some people are against that. That's how I did my sister's. Although on my sister's I put... Um, a little bit like a layer of quilting um, batting between the fabric and the sticky board which I didn't like because it kind of puckered a little when I put it in the frame so I probably will not do the quilting batting but yeah I think that's all I have I have to get to work um, when I say work I mean in my office I'm self-employed and I have a lot to do and so I need to just go get it done. I need to go get some orders done, get some work done. Um, I think that's it. By the way, there's a lot of you that comment and a lot of you that um, 
I know watch my videos and I appreciate it. I'm horrible at commenting back. Like I binge watch so many floss tubers. I just I'm so bad at commenting. So I'm gonna try to be better at commenting so that you know that I exist, you know. Um, one more thing, Grime Guard video. A lot of you said that you were interested by a lot, I mean, I think like two people. Um, you said you were interested in the Grime Guard video on how I make it. I will try to film that very soon. Um, so that should be my next video is how I make my Grime Guards. Um, so yeah, anyways, I will talk to you guys later. Take care and I can't wait to have a, more of an update on my holiday Quaker. Follow me on Instagram. I post updates on there. Jen underscore crafts. J-E-N-N -N underscore crafts. And that's it. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye.